Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're going to take you into the gym and cover the NSCA's Olympic lifting technique. We're going to go over the snatch, the clean and jerk, the push press, the push jerk, and we're going to go over the phases of each lift. We're going to break it down into slow-mo videos, talk about what's important in each phase of the lift, and I have Dr. Longfellow with me to help show you guys. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So big key points when we're setting up for the power clean. First thing is gonna be the foot positioning. We want the foot feet positioned at hip width or slightly wider. To start, toes are gonna to be angled out slightly into external rotation. Grip width, we'll talk through measuring the grip width and how to set it up, but in general here, we're gonna be slightly outside of hip width. As far as shoulder positioning, we want shoulders over or slightly in front of the bar. We're gonna drop his hips to get his chest up, eyes are gonna be angled forward. So you see here, shoulders are slightly in front of the axis of the bar, that's where we want it. If he comes too far forward, so we're gonna to be too far forward there, drop back down, that's gonna be a little too back. We want a nice, happy middle, shoulders right over the front of the bar. Elbows here, if we come around to the front, we want elbows, basically the pit of your elbows pointed in, so the point of your elbows is gonna be pointed out, scaps depressed down, so he's got a little bit of lat tension there. That's gonna be our setup position. So from here, we're gonna go into the transition in the second pull. So as he pulls, go ahead and reset. He's gonna think about just pushing himself away from the ground, break the knees. We want a vertical shin angle at that point. Shoulders stay over top of or in front of the bar. At the transition phase, he's coming up to just about mid thigh level. Shoulders are still over the bar. A lot of people like to get behind the bar here. So we want those shoulders stay over the bar until we hit the end of that transition phase. Other big thing, if we come to the side, reset mat. We want hips and back to rise at the same rate. His back angle stays the same the entire time so that the shoulders are not come, uh, rising faster than the hips. So show him a bad rep, Matt. So here the hips rise faster or the shoulders may rise faster. Okay, so we want that same angle throughout. All right, so we're at the end of the transition phase. We're gonna move into the second pull or getting into triple extension. Triple extension, we want plantar flexion, knee extension, hip extension. Okay, so from that transition phase, he's just gonna drive vertically upward forcefully and get into full triple extension. At the top of that triple extension phase, he's gonna give us a nice little shrug to unweight the bar, and that's gonna initiate our third pull or our pulling under phase. We can also start from different hang positions. We'll start folks from a low hang, which is gonna be maybe right above or below the knees depending on the athlete. We can start from a mid hang, which is gonna be mid thigh or right at that transition phase or we can start a high hang just in that power position. All right, so we're gonna talk about the transition or the pull under the bar, the third pull. So if we go back to the hang position. So transition phase, Matt's gonna finish into that second pull with a strong hip extension, triple extension. He's gonna elevate the bar, rotate his arms underneath the bar and finish in a quarter squat for that power clean. Now this position here, the front rack, can be a very difficult position for a lot of new athletes. We may have some wrist issues, we may have some elbow, shoulder external, or maybe some lat issues. So if your athletes are having trouble there, those are areas to check out. But this is gonna be the end of our power clean or the end of our third pull under. All right, so we wanna cover a little bit of terminology in terms of what is a hand clean, what's a power clean, what does that indicate in terms of position? So a, in general, if, if we just say clean, Clean is gonna indicate we're starting from the floor. Okay, if we say a hang clean, that's gonna indicate we're starting from a hang. So clean is from the floor, hang is from the hang here. That indicates our start position. Our finished position is gonna be indicated by a power. If we say power clean, we're gonna catch above parallel. If we say just clean or full clean, we're gonna catch into a full squat. So we'll go through each one of those. All right, so if we go through just a full clean, Clean indicates we start from the floor, we catch in a full squat position. That is a clean. If we say power clean, power indicates we start from, or I'm sorry, clean indicates we start from the floor, power indicates the finished position, he's gonna catch above parallel. Okay? If we say hang clean, hang is gonna indicate the start position, clean indicates we catch in a full squat, 
If we say hang power clean, hang indicates start position, power indicates we catch above parallel. And that's how we differentiate start versus catch positions. All right, so we want to talk to you a little bit about how to spotting Olympic lifts. We get a lot of questions from people new to Olympic lifting. How do we spot the lifts? And the answer is we don't. They're such a quick lift, there really is no way to effectively or safely spot them. But we do want to talk about how to safely miss a lift because it's going to happen. I like to talk to my athletes about the idea of dump and jump. Okay, with the clean, it's quite simple. The bar only has one place to go. If we're going to miss, it's going to go in front of you. We're going to dump or push the bar forward as we push ourselves backward and jump out of the way. So go ahead and show that, Matt. So he pushed the bar forward, he pushed his body backwards, that's our dump and jump. Now with the snatch, it gets a little more complex because now the bar has two places to go. We may either miss in front or we may miss in back. So if we're going to miss that snatch in front, he's going to dump the bar forward, he's going to jump himself backwards. Okay. And then the same would be true if he misses the bar backwards. If he's missing backwards, he's going to let the bar the momentum carry the bar backwards, he's going to jump himself forwards. And that's how we safely miss, and that's why we don't spot the Olympic lifts. <laughs> I want to talk about uh, grip width. How do we find the grip width? We're going to cover um, how the NSCA teaches it specifically for the CSCS. We're going to cover a little more, a quicker and a more, I think, practical way to actually measure it when you're implementing it with your athletes. So to measure per NSCA recommendations, there's two different ways for the snatch specifically. We can measure elbow to elbow method. Basically just take the tip of the elbow all the way over. So he's at about, let's call it 41 and a half inches. So we could take that 41 and a half inches and apply that to the bar. That's gonna be his grip width on the bar. Or we can go the fist to opposite shoulder method. So I'm just gonna take basically the end of the acromion here all the way out to the tip of his furthest knuckle. That's gonna give us about 44 inches, okay? So there's a little bit of variation there, um, but those are the two methods the NSCA is going to teach to determine grip width. What I prefer the more practical way is just to figure out where the bar sits on your athletes. So Matt's going to take the grip, get into a snatch position. He's going to find his power position. So get a little more vertical here, unlock a bit. And what we want to see is the bar is resting in the crease of his hips just below his ASIS. So if you come a little taller, Matt, yep. So I'm going to find his ASIS unlock the hips just a little bit. And we want actually, ideally Matt could go a little wide, so he might need a longer bar. Matt's got some long arms. But we want just below ASIS in the hip pocket there is gonna be the practical way to determine the grip width. All right, so we're gonna talk you through the, the start position and the first pull of the snatch. It's gonna be very similar to your power clean, just the grip width is gonna be the major difference. So once we've determined grip width, Matt's just gonna take a grip on the bar. We want feet similar to the clean, about hip width or slightly wider depending on the athlete, toes externally rotated or pointed out just slightly. We're gonna have him bring his hips just above knees, shoulders are gonna be just over or slightly in front of the bar, so I'm gonna have him drop a little bit, pull that chest tall mat, there we go, so we're a little bit over the bar. Last piece here is gonna be head up. I want pits of the elbows pointed in, points of the elbows pointed out, scaps depressed, so give me some lat. And here you should be pretty, pretty locked and loaded, feel a lot of tension. All right, so once we're in a good set position with the shoulder slightly over the bar and everything's locked and loaded here, we're gonna go into the first pull. He's gonna push the floor away, just, above the, just below the knees. His shin should be vertical, so drive those knees back. And then he's gonna transition into the transition phase right at mid-thigh. Big point here is we want shoulders, hips rising at the same rate. So if you reset, Matt, from the side, we should see a the same angle all the way through. So hips and shoulders rise together into that transition phase. Once we are in this transition phase, Matt, give me a little more vertical shin. Once we're in that transition phase, we're gonna move right into the second pull. Second pull is going to be bringing the bar into your hip socket for the power position. Then we're getting triple extension, emphasizing plantar flexion, knee extension, hip extension. At the top of that triple extension, we wanna cue a little shrug to unweight the bar, and that would initiate our third pull or our pulling under phase. So third pull, we wanna, after we unweight that bar, just pull under, keep the bar close, catch the bar in a quarter squat. There we go. 
All right, so we're gonna talk to you guys about the difference between the push press and the push jerk. The main difference here, we're gonna do the push press first. It's gonna be a dip and drive, and we're gonna end in a loft out position with no knee bend. So let's see that push press. So we're gonna end locked out, and the, the knees are extended in the catch position at the top. Now, by contrast, when we look at the push jerk, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push ourselves down under the bar. So we're gonna see a dip. Drive is the same, but now we're pushing ourselves under the bar, and that's what defines the jerk portion of this. So for the athletes, we a lot of times wanna use the push jerk. It emphasizes triple extension and really vertical power creation. But in the Olympics or in a competition lifting, a lot of times you'll see a split jerk like this. That dip and drive might give you more power, might be able to make you lift a little bit more, but a lot of times because of you know, injury risk or whatever with athletes, we don't want to necessarily emphasize that in training and, and the NSCA kind of promotes the push jerk instead. So just to review five key points from this video guys, the triple extension is the ankle plantar flexion, knee extension, and hip extension. That hip extension point is mainly used in the second pull when we're going from the, from the mid thigh through the hip. That's when we emphasize hip extension. If you want to learn more about the NSCA and strength conditioning recommendations, go ahead and join the strength and conditioning study group on Facebook. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Olympic lifting specifically and some of the assessments I take my athletes through and drills, correctives, mobility drills to get people moving better and performing better with the Olympic lifts themselves specifically, you can go ahead and join my group down below. It's called the Weightlifting Mobility Academy. All right, guys, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button. It'll help other people find the video and help us make more videos just like this. If you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more strength conditioning and movement science content. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks. Thank you, guys.